Bank Studios. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Well, um, Trump is on the record now with respect to his running mate, at least uh, in the negative. He had uh, this to say at a rally in North Charleston, South Carolina about the prospect that uh, Nikki Haley would be considered as a VP running mate. And remember this, when I make a statement like that about Nikki, that means she will never be running for vice president. She will never be running for vice president. Remember that. There are things you can say about people. Do you ever see where, you know, you're really hitting one person, they're hitting you, you know, but it goes to a level. But we're at the level now, I am in particular, you know, bird brain and lots of other things. There are things that when you say that you're never going to have her, so I hope nobody wants her because I think she's absolutely terrible. She's terrible. So you're never going to have her. Okay. Well, I guess that's that, huh? That's it's that. official now? So I, I guess that will allay the concerns of uh, some, including Donald Trump Jr. Um, on the other side, the uh, damage control duty continues, and the uh, personnel charged with that duty is expanding, uh, to include uh, Mr. Tingle. Mr. T- Mr. Oh. Tingle. You remember Mr. Oh, Tingle? Um, oh, my God. Chris Matthews. Chris Matthews. I knew sure. here. I can't remember. Uh, he Gotta was tingle uh, up my leg. Hey. Yeah, exactly. He was uh, trotted out to uh, see if he still got the old feeling. Uh, give some advice to uh, Team Biden for uh, Joe Obama fourth term. Biden's going to get out there and mix it up. He's going to have to get on the corner and meet people and hang out with regular people and give some speeches and perk people up like Harry Truman did back in 1948. You got to sell. You got to sell yourself. He's going to do it. Now, he may make some problems along the way. He will make more gaps. Of course he will. But isn't it better to have him out there? You know, if I were in the back room with him, I'd, 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 I'd make him feel better about himself. I'd just be just nice to him and encouraging. That's one thing but staffers should do. Encourage the guy. Encourage him when he does something real, really good well. Job, He's job. had a good a couple of days, I think. I believe the last couple of days have been good. I, I would encourage him to get out there, and I would tell him to meet people because he's really good at that. You sit next to him on, yes. a, on an Amtrak train, and you know you're with a real human being, a real person. It's really Joe Biden who's sitting next to him. He's a real person, and he has to get that out with people because I'm not sure Trump is a real person that way. He's not really like a regular person that way, whereas Trump is. But Joe Biden is, and I think he should sell it. Oh my God. I've met Trump. He's such a regular person. And Joe Biden getting out meeting people. What was that stunt he did the other day? He brought fried chicken home to and a burgers. black family and burgers. Yeah, well, yeah, he brought it home to well, a not family. Home, but he went into their yeah. home with fried yeah, chicken and he did wanted this, to hear about their Yeah, he did his best Sidney Poitier impersonation. I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, regular guy. Yeah, regular you know guy. how you know somebody's a regular guy? He snips your hair. That's how you know. That's right. Um, and uh, so that's that's one piece of advice. Lean into uh, Biden. You know, old Scranton Joe, the guy, you know, from the Amtrak train. Sure. Um, also uh, enlisted was um, the uh, former host of Captain Kangaroo, who's now the Treasury Secretary, uh, Janet Yellen, who, again, from what she's seen, you know, yeah. th- this is my favorite line of of uh, damage control. You know, he that's behind great. closed doors, he's Plato. Uh, in front of people, he sounds like he should be, you know, transfixed with play doh. But uh, he, behind closed doors, I mean, what I see. It called President Biden a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Do you agree with that? I absolutely disagree with that. <laughs> I work very closely with President Biden and I'm often with him on foreign trips. He's at the top of his game. Oh, yeah. Top of his game. Absolutely. Fine. I'm Again, I'm convinced. I don't think we need to sell past the... Speaking of selling, I don't think we need to sell past the close on this. They say he's at the top of his game. I'm fine with it. Uh, let the American public make their own judgment about what is observably true. Michael Goodwin is New York Post columnist, Fox News contributor. He joins us now. Michael, thanks for being with us again. Appreciate it. Good morning, guys. Thank you. Um, how are you uh, receiving the uh, damage control effort thus far since last Thursday night? 
Well, I think it's a helter-skelter operation. They're, they're not sure, they're kind of shadow boxing here because the idea that he, there's nothing wrong with him is preposterous. And so you can't really go there. You can say, oh, in private. Well, w- why is he different in public then? So I think it's, this is their immediate reaction to try to put out a fire, which is the Robert Herr report of, about his memory, about him sort of being, as I said in the column, basically bonkers. Uh, and so I think they're trying to stamp it out with every way they can, you know, attacking her, attacking Merrick Garland for not, uh, you know, censoring the report, apparently. Um, and, of course, anybody who dares to write about it or talk about it, you know, what are you talking about? I was with him yesterday. You know, uh, this idea, I mean, the, the Chris Matthews uh, part that you played, I mean, it's hilarious. Do you want Joe Biden to get out there? Really? I mean, when this administration has spent the campaign of 2020 and the three years since keeping him hidden, the New York Times also had an, an editorial. It's probably where Chris Matthews got the idea. You know, he's got to get out there more. I mean, they're not, interestingly, they're not denying the New York Times editorial board that he's got real problems. They think Part of that is that people don't know him enough, and he should get out there and make more of an effort, do more interviews. Well, don't you think he would if he could? Uh, I mean, I think that everyone is trying to deny uh, all the all the pro Biden, pro Democratic ticket people. They're trying to deny the reality that a we have all seen, and b Robert Hur has confirmed in private. So I'm not sure where they go from here, except on the campaign, you just keep attacking Trump, because nothing unites Democrats like Donald Trump. And so if you just keep banging away on Trump, MAGA, Trump, MAGA, and of course, he's giving them lots of ammunition daily almost, uh, that is their plan. And of course... They saw what happened in the New York special election. Uh, the Democrats picked up a seat there that they had lost in uh, 2020. Um, and I think that will encourage them that the, uh, A, the president's age and, and uh, problems, cognitive problems, and the uh, border issues uh, can be managed and handled in a swing district. Now, it's a district that... Um, Biden carried in 2020, but that's the year George Santos also run the won the district. On, so on, uh, on, on, on that on that district, you know, how, how much can you really extrapolate from that particular special election in terms of uh, what's ha- you know what it means for uh, the suburbs around the country? It, you can't you can't overdo it. I mean, the, the, no two places are exactly alike. But I think you can read some tea leaves. You can see specific issues. For example, the border and Biden himself. I mean, Tom Suozzi, uh, who had great name recognition, having basically held the essence of that district, has been redistricting. But he held right. most of it for three terms, and he. He did. He did not seek re-election because he wanted to run for governor. So I think that uh, it, it was a Democratic district uh, historically, both for the presidency and for uh, the local Congress members. The changes, along with sort of what was not quite a red wave in in uh, the nation in the, the last election in the midterms, but. In New York, and particularly in Long Island, it was a red wave, and that was one of the seats that flipped. Um, so, look, I, I think that you there aren't that many races now, so you're looking forward. What what guidance can we take from everything? Uh, polling, special election, looking forward to November. Trump is in uh, court in Manhattan today, pretrial hearing. Uh, Essentially, the judge there will decide whether or not the trial starts on uh, March 25th as currently scheduled. Um, What's your assessment of the wild card that is the Trump trials? I mean, the others seem probably less likely than not to get to trial before the November election. But the one in Manhattan seems more likely than not to. And so if he is convicted in Manhattan, 
you know, this is one of the wild cards people are trying to assess. What kind of impact does that have on the race? Uh, you know, my overall view of these cases is that they've probably peaked in their damage to him. Uh, in th- this case, I mean, there's something wrong with all of the cases, mm-hmm. right? And in this one is particularly weird. Because it's the Manhattan District Attorney who doesn't uh, doesn't uh, convict anybody of anything. I mean, murder is just you, you just had a bad day. Uh, so this case against Donald Trump it's based on the on the porn star star. They're always stars, aren't they? Yeah, uh, not a star. <laughs> Stormy Daniels and the, the money paid the hush money supposedly paid to her. Now it's largely based on the testimony of Michael Cohen, convicted perjurer, um, and the the idea is that uh, in doing so and in misrepresenting the payment on his bookkeeping, uh, which I guess became part of business filings, Trump committed 37 or 39 crimes, all of which would be misdemeanors, but through some metamorphosis that only the DA himself understands, they all become felonies. Uh, Now, no one in the world knows how that happened. And it's one of the things that say that tells you these people are just out to get him. They Mm -hmm. are just out to get him. So even if he's convicted, I'm not sure what the impact. Obviously, there'll be appeals, and there's a lot of lawyers think the case will eventually be thrown out. Uh, you know, also have the judge in the civil forfeiture case about to rule, and you have Fonnie Willis, right, testifying in Georgia, I think, today. Uh, so there's a lot going on with a lot of these cases. The Supreme Court is weighing the question of immunity. Uh, and and I and I do believe that the uh, finding by her that not to prosecute Biden on classified documents is another arrow in Trump's quiver. Because why is why am I being prosecuted? He's not. Now the lawyers may be able to make can make an argument as to obstruction, et cetera, et cetera. But I think for ordinary Americans, which is really the the question we're talking about in terms of impact. I think each of these cases has a problem that people can point to, and Trump does, and people can point to and say, it's persecution. It's persecution, it's persecution, it's persecution. And that argument has a lot of, uh, a lot of power among a lot of people. But don't you think the Biden campaign wanted to campaign on this, to just keep Biden hidden and let the court cases take care of Trump? Yeah, look, I think it was... Uh, it's it's not a bad idea on paper, but and and even the Republican opponents to Trump. I mean, I remember Ron DeSantis very early. Um, all of them thought <clears throat> that Trump had about a twenty five percent solid approval in the Republican Party, and everything else was soft. And you know, if he was at forty percent, then. 15 or 20 percent of that even could be peeled away by the opponents in the primary system. That was the theory of the case that they all had going into it. They knew he was powerful within the party, but they thought the combination of these cases and just uh, Trump running his mouth, that they would be able to peel away and defeat him ultimately in a one-on-one contest. Well, we see what all these indictments did. They actually hardened all of that support that Trump had. And so it became unbreakable. Nobody could peel away any of it. And, and he, he has grown. If you go back and look at the polls at the beginning of uh, 23, let's say, um, and compare them to now, the difference is largely those cases that have driven up Trump's approval because people view them as persecution. And as I say, there is logic behind that for virtually every one of these cases. There's something about each of them that says, you this you did this just because it's Donald Trump, didn't you? Michael Goodwin, New York Post columnist, Fox News contributor. Michael, thank you as always. Always a pleasure, guys. Thank you both. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Connect with Dan and Amy using the AM560 mobile app. Download it today at 560theanswer.com slash mobile. My brother.